Well, hello. Good morning. Let's see if we're connected and up and running. I forgot to put my apron on this morning. There we are. We are live. Beats the alternative. There we go. Okay. Looks like everything seems to be working. If you don't mind. Um, if you pop in and you don't mind, just say hello. Let me know you can hear me all right. And see all right. Nice to know things are working as they should. Since so often in life they don't. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Be positive. <laughs> I'm putting on my apron. I forgot. This is a messy proposition. Um, I don't know if any of you are going to do this with me today. But if you're prone to get things on the front of your clothes, your shirts or whatever. And you have an apron, I would put one on. Okay, so today's demo is about faux encaustic. And faux, of course, means, you know, something that looks real that isn't. And encaustic is wax, like art with wax or, you know, of a wax medium. And I love, love, love encaustic works. However, I struggle with the notion of buying any further art supplies that I already have because it's just too much and also there's a smell um, when you're using wax to do encaustic art it, there's an odor kind of like when you do stained glass and you have to smell the soldering gone or you know things like that so don't really need that kind of environment for me or the dogs so I'm like okay got to be a way to do this with mediums that I already have on hand um so I've, I think I've, I've reached a point with this, and I've been doing this for ye years and years and years. And finally this year, I think I have fine-tuned it to a point where I'm satisfied. Um, before I get started on this, let me say we were supposed to have this demo Friday at 10 a.m. And I had to reschedule because one of my dogs was really sick. And I will say that I don't think he's 100%, but he's he's on his way. He's a little better. So thank you for your understanding. I try not to change these, change or cancel these things unless it's absolutely necessary. So that being said, let's get on with, with this. For anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Kelly Cameron of Kelly's Color Studio. And I do these demos live here, and then I share them over on YouTube. And... Um, I'm a mixed media artist, and you, we might be doing this today. Next week you tune in, we might be making a watercolor greeting card. I mean, you know, it just, it's ever-changing. Always something. Something different. Um, I am on Patreon, and if you're already a supporter, thank you. And that would be all of my housekeeping stuff. Now let's do some art. <laughs> okay, so this is one that I... Um, have done and this is one that I'm very satisfied with it and it may or may not be all that great to anybody else but oh there's a bird on the railing three feet from my window and he's talking to me <laughs> look a kitten I'm so easily distracted sorry um this is what I wanted to achieve and it came out the way I wanted it to and that's the thing. If you have worked with me at all, you know that I talk about intent. So, I did a thistle painting once that was really, it was really pretty good. Um, it was about three foot by four foot, and it was a close-up of a thistle plant with all the little, and stupid me, silly me, silly, silly me. I was like, my intent is to paint this with a bigger type brush. And make it loose. Well, you know, this little up close is kind of detailed. So, ding dong. I painted the thing. And, you know, when you go from brushes this big. And you can paint big and loose. <laughs> that's fine. But when you pull out a brush like this. 
and you're over here going <laughs> this detail that's when you lose the looseness this is what makes it tighten up and I finished the painting and it was beautiful and it sold for a fair amount of money and someone said oh don't you I just love this and I'm like well I don't really like it I'm like how can you not like it I'm like because it, I didn't meet my goal my intent was to do a loose painting and I completely lost it and went detailed so intent is huge and uh you know yeah it was a painting and yeah it came out okay and blah, 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 but it's not what I wanted it's not that you know it didn't meet my goal so this meets my intent therefore I'm very happy even if artistically it doesn't appeal to anybody else I achieved with this technique what I wanted to do so let me kind of try to explain this a little bit to you and what I'll do is hold it up hi Carol good morning how are ya I'm gonna hold this up close closer to you and I'm gonna try to hold it still so that you can see hopefully hopefully the depth and dimension in this um I don't think my video is working let's see hang on here we go didn't hit play Durr. sorry one second mm, now it's got me back at the beginning this is crazy this thing okay now it's working okay okay I got it okay now I'm with you okay could I say okay one more time okay 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 <laughs> let's pull this back a little bit now I hope you can see the depth the horizontal stripes are uh, sort of like a tie-dyed tissue paper that I did and they were put down first and then the subsequent layers were all done with a heavy gel medium tons and tons and tons and layers and layers and layers of gel medium and then some detail with the Posca pen and these marks right here were put down with colored pencil early in the game and if you look at that closely you can tell that there's they're sort of it's almost like the clear parts look like water and the orange and yellow parts are way down at the bottom you know and that's that's the impression that's what i'm looking for i'm wanting to create something with a soft milky effect and i want it to have uh, i want it to be the kind of thing that you want to reach out and touch because you're you're compelled to do so because the surface looks interesting and you can't tell what went first I see it's in layers but I can't tell what came first and that's the whole that's the whole thing so that's my that's my deal that's my goal that's that's my intent with the whole thing so this one was what I set out to do as a sample piece my goal is to do stuff like this on really big canvases that I have already and I and you guys have seen all these things I've been making over time these things these crazy crazy things I've been making those because on the three or four foot canvas those will be these pieces these interesting pieces that are way under and way back first layer and then everything else will come around and be on top in layers. So I want to show you how to do this technique. If you're at all interested in it. If you like the the look of it. See, I'm, I'm always... <laughs> and with encaustic art, you can't do that. Because it leaves terrible fingerprints. So I love that you can... You know, I've been carrying this thing around all week. You can... It's pretty durable. It's on watercolor paper, by the way. So um, let me get started on, on like how to do this. Oh, let's see. This is just paper for underneath. Okay. Here's, um, if you've been with me, you know that I've been making, um, or I've been taking bleeding tissue paper. Like this, right? And I've been stacking colors together and making sort of tie-dyed paper like this so you stack them and wet them and um carol i'll answer that in just a second um so 
I went from solid paper to tie-dyed paper, and then I've painted and drawn and decorated this paper, and I have used it in my collages, and I'm very, very happy with the way these look because they're one of a kind. There's no, there's no duplicates. And I have made, I have this catalog here of papers that I've made, that I've, I haven't made, I say made, that I've painted on and, and decorated and all with acrylic paints and um, markers and a chrome marker. Um, and these get torn and used, cut or torn and used in and here are all of these uh, collages that I do. And there's one in here I really want to show you. Made it the other day, and I just absolutely love it. Let's see. Here it is. Look at this. <laughs> Isn't that fun? To me, the silver around here looks like wire, almost. I don't know if you can see that. But anyway, yep, just me having fun. And, of course, I have them arranged by color. That's how my stupid mind works. <laughs> and, yeah, I'll decorate any any scrap of paper. It doesn't have to be a square or a rectangle. It's, it's just me going, yeah, let's do that. Um, this one's cute, too. I need to do this on bigger paper. It's just a, a fraction of a piece of paper, but I just painted a big really big circle on it and did little silver dots and it's to me it's that's really fun that'll be great somewhere so carol says i missed it is the white milk glass white the paper beautiful um is the white milk glass white let me oops let me put these in there too this is a whole nother thing <laughs> whole nother demo um, are you talking about, I'm trying to understand your question, Carol. Are you talking about this painting still? Are you talking about, are you asking if this is the, the paper showing through? I'm not exactly clear on your question. Or were you talking about this? And then there's that delay. She'll come up in just a second and tell me what she means. This, okay. Uh, yes, this is the paper, and I was sort of headed that way. What I've done is um, I use 11 by 15 watercolor paper, okay? And I'll tear off a sheet and cut it in half this way, typically. Now, I do use the big sheets, too, but for today's demo, that's what these are, our papers cut in half. And... <clears throat> This one is just a piece of that paper, and all I've done, this is the first thing you do, is I'm using Liquitex Matte Super Heavy Gel. Okay, it's a matte finish. It's super heavy. It is really, really thick. And to give you some idea of what all I've been doing, this was new about a week ago. I've used that much. So it's pretty addictive and lots of fun. So... Anyway, all I did was I used the back of a spatula, scooped out some of this stuff, put it on here, and then took <laughs> this little thing, this Betty Crocker cake froster, <clears throat> and let me make room. And then I actually just did like this. It's got a little beveled edge here. I don't know if you could get this at the Dollar Tree or what, but um, it's just a neat little frosting thing. And I've just done this until it's all coated and it's pretty smooth. I don't put it on with the brush because that leaves brush marks. And I want it to be as smooth as possible to look like it's encaustic. Um, and when as you're doing this, what you'll see, the problem is, or the challenging part about it is, these corners, well, there's there's often blank paper here that's not touched in these corners. So I pick up the stuff, and I think the angle that you have this matters. 
Um, but I pick it up and I try again to make sure my edges, I'm going over the edges, outside the edges, like this. So this paper takes a beating and I'll show you, I've got three layers of paper here. So when I show you, I'm going to pull it off. So um, I'm going to actually do that in a few minutes and show you. So here's, here's one that it's, um, there's no paint involved in this. I made notes on the back so I could remember to tell you. There's no paint on this. Um, <clears throat> this one, when I did it, I took, let me find it. I had some Liquitex, um, these little things of paint and I'm trying to use up and this is unbleached titanium. So it's paint this, this color beige. And I mixed that with my white acrylic paint and then maybe three parts this mixed it all up on a palette with a palette knife and then put that on and that gives it this creamy off-white kind of look and that's the it's an encaustic look that's to me that's the way i remember most encaustics looking they have this beeswax kind of color this little you know creamy and i haven't seen that much encaustic work but all that i have seen kind of had this and i think that really lends itself to looking like encaustic so see the difference <clears throat> excuse me, this is really white because I only put the clear stuff on and this is sort of a creamy color and um, I can show you uh, how to do this if you want on, on this or we can keep rolling either way. Uh, let me see. Do you want to see how to put the how to make it like beige with the stuff and everything. With the stuff, real technical here. With the stuff and everything. <laughs> oh my God, this is like, really? <laughs> Could you be any less technical? <laughs> oh, now you're laughing at your own jokes, stop. <clears throat> Tell you what, I'll go ahead and, and show this because it is part of the process and that's what that's what the demo is supposed to be. So I'll do it. And um, this is like waxy palette paper. And I really like using this because then I could, you know, it's got a lot of room, but it's not like a plate or anything. And I could pick it up and move it. Okay. So um, I'm going to, well, no, never mind. I'll take that back. I was going to say, I'm going to put some tape on the back of this, but it'll make a bump. So I won't. Okay. So here's the dealio. I'm going in here with the, see the with the back of the spatula. See, there's not any on the top. The spatula, the palette knife. I'm putting, I'm picking it up with the back of it. Now that's probably enough to do this. I'm gonna put just a little more because I'd rather too much than not enough. Okay. If you buy one of these to do this. It's important to, um, at the end of the day when you're done using it, I take my water bottle and mist it inside. And I keep this thing, this, this comes with it, I keep it on there in between uses and it really helps to keep it from all drying out. I guess I just wondered about different mediums like color pencils adhering to the new surface. Oh, well I'm gonna get to all that because I actually took some colored pencils and made some marks as we get a little further into the design of it. I have a few that are made up ahead of time that I can show you what I've done because this takes, this would take like an hour to dry after I do it. So I can't show you on this one, but I can, I'm trying to show you each step, um, <clears throat> you know, like they do with the cooking shows and magically I have one in the oven over here, you know, so that's what I'm trying to do is show you each step, um, through work that I've done in advance. And I just want you to see here about, about how much paint I use to mix together with the gel medium to make the paper look sort of encaustic, which is, if anyone's just popped in, it's a waxy look. So there's my unbleached titanium, and this is my titanium white. Um, the, the gel medium dries clear, okay, the matte super heavy gel. It dries clear, this stuff. And I um, 
I don't want to put so much paint in there that this is not um, transparent. I want this to be, you know, I want this to still be able to dry clear. So what I'm going to do is now, and I like, this is why I have this big paper here, because this is letting me have room to work. I'm picking up the paint. I'm going to mix the paint. Here comes the white. Just going to bring it all over here. You see how nice this is because there's no edge. Like a pan or plate has an edge and you have to, this is really nice. So I can mix this stuff. I'm still only using the back of my palette knife. See, there's nothing on the front. No waste, nothing to clean up really. And I'm just going to mix this really well. I've actually got way too much here. I may do two sheets. I'll probably do two sheets. Now I only mix this paint in with this and use it on the first coat on a piece of paper because if I accidentally get too much paint, I wouldn't want to put it over some artwork, uh, some sketches or some tissue paper or something if it's not going to be absolutely clear, right? Hey Bridget, how you doing? <clears throat> so this is really beige looking and it could dry mostly clear or mostly beige. I could be right on that fine line. You never know till it dries. So I would only use this to start, like when there's no art on the paper, it's just to color the paper. Now this does have one layer of the matte super heavy gel already, but but no art or anything. So this is this is how I do this part. Oh and y'all I gotta take my watch off. Cause this seriously is is just <laughs> it's just kind of messy. Okay, so I'm going to pick up as much of that as I can, and I'm going to just sort of get it on there. I'm not going to try to get it smooth or anything. I'm just getting it on there. Now this little hudabi, <laughs> and I'm going to just try and get it everywhere. See how the edges don't want to do? And I'm trying to keep it on the paper, but see, I'm still going out. But I gotta get my edges, my edges are not coming. So I have to go off a little bit to get these edges. The edges just are tough. And I'm just trying to keep it smooth. And you have to work kind of quickly because this stuff dries kind of quick. It's, now I'm trying to get rid of all the stuff on the spreader, okay. So you can wind up with I like to wind up like this with like three passes and it's it's pretty smooth. I like that I like kind of the swirl in there. I'm having trouble getting it though because it's drying on me. And I keep doing it because there we go. I was trying not to have any ridges. Hey Johnny, how you doing? I was trying not to have any ridges where I pressed and there was a line. So, and I still, look, have a place right here where there's none. Shazam. Okay, well, I just put some down. It's, you know, you're not gonna get perfection, so don't try. Just come close if you can. Okay, can you see how that came out? That's kind of what we've got. So now it has all the beginnings of a textural, um, not textural, it has all the beginnings of, it looks like an encaustic piece, kind of a waxy soft. This is a really good start. It's the right color, it's translucent, and it's gonna do everything we need it to do. And put that over there to dry. And then as we have, ooh, See, there's this to deal with now. So here's what I do. I scrape up all of this because if you're gonna use this paper again, it helps if it's smooth. So you don't need these bumps of stuff. Plus it picks up the extra stuff, okay? Now, let's see here. You know, I don't have any paper that is pre-cut. So I'm gonna actually, whoops, dropped it. 
I'm going to actually do put the rest of this stuff on this. It's just a piece of cardstock. Okay. Hi, Janie. How are you? Welcome, Mert. Could you start with the tea dyed watercolor paper to get the same look? I think you could, but uh, to me, tea dyed is not well. It depends on how how dark it comes out, you know. Um, that's a good question. I've not tried it. I won't say that it won't work because it might. Uh, if you try it, let me know. I'm I am more about going for uh, a really soft look, and to me, uh, tea dyed would would have real distinct maybe some lines in it. I don't know. Um, I'm all about the whole thing being kind of one color. And I guess that's why I would have never thought to have tried the tea dyed. But if you can get the tea dyed to happen and it doesn't have streaks and lines and stuff, um, I'm not saying it wouldn't be pretty to look at. It might be just beautiful. But um, I don't know if it'll give you an end result that is encaustic looking. But it might be a look that you like and is beautiful and you can do something with. So, okay, so here's this piece of cardstock. Even cardstock can hold up well to this kind of collage work and stuff if you put a coat of this on it first. It makes the paper thicker and heavier and it keeps the paper from absorbing water when you use glue and water to collage or when you paint. And when you're done with your work, at the end, this paper will not be all warbly and bumpy like paper can be as it absorbs moisture. This paper will be kind of like it is right now. It'll be, see it's kind of heavy. It'll feel like a piece of leather kind of when you get everything on it. And it won't be as buckly, okay? Is that a word, buckly? <laughs> all right, so. Now here's, here's my little quick trick for getting out of this because this stuff dries so quickly. This is what I do. Baby wipes to rescue. They're quick. I don't have a sink in my studio. Okay, gotcha. I don't have mine in tea very long. Just a fairly quick dip to give a base layer of color. Oh, that could work. That really could work. I'm not sure. Um, If you, you know... Have you, have you already done some watercolor paper in tea? If you have, I'd be curious to, to see. Share a picture if you want. You can share it right here in the, in the chat. Okay, so I got this thing clean. And this, since I have this wipe right here, I will go ahead, flip it the other way, and just give this a good little... Ooh, the stuff's drying on it already. I'm sort of funny about my, my tools. I really like my stuff to be... I like to take care of it. I like it to be clean the next time I pick it up. Because with this, a lot of times you want a smooth surface. And if you've got a bunch of paint stuck on there, you're just not going to get that. So I'll wipe it and then put it in the water there. And this... Um, I like to reuse if I can. And there's no reason I can't reuse this palette later. Well, except I just got stuff all over the back of it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Such a mess. Okay. So, anyway. Anyway. So I'm going to pull this up. Move it to the side. I'm going to show you all my... This When I know I'm going to do this kind of work... Whoops. Here's what I do. I have several pieces of paper... And you know, do you recognize this paper? This is the paper that comes with, you know, stuff from Amazon or whatever. Shipping, you get a lot of this stuff. I flatten it out as soon as it comes and try to get it kind of smooth. And then I use it for stuff like this. It's great. So now I'm ready for another thing. Um, Mert says, oh, I'll let you know how it works. Cool. I can't wait to see. It's for anyone who's just popping in, we're using matte super heavy gel and watercolor paper. And we're, we're pursuing uh, like abstract type stuff. 
and we want the end result to be like a faux encaustic. And encaustic is like um, wax, wax art. Um, I do have, here's one that I did last week or so. <clears throat> and this one is finished. And it's not too encaustic looking, but it was I was trying to do the colors and all with that in mind. And I'm I'm fairly happy with it. I did finish up with a brush, and I don't know if you can see, but the texture, you can see the brush marks maybe. You see those mm, turn in here. You can see those brush marks as I turn it to the light. Um because I use so much of the gel medium, it does have an ethereal, like a soft look. And I like that about it. It's sold already, so that's good. Um, here's one that I'm working on now. That And this is that thing. It feels like leather. It's heavy and it kind of flops. This is, I'm playing. I'm just playing, y'all. I don't know. Um, this is acrylic. And, the, well, this is the beige stuff on first. And then this is, um, this is Posca pens and acrylic paints and, different flowers and things, and I'm, I'm, it's going to be much more subdued than this when I finish it. It's in process, and um, I'm just having fun and kind of playing. That's not finished yet. Okay, so this is one that I finished, and I don't, it's not like a finished piece of work that I would advertise or anything, but it's more for demo's sake, and I want to hold it up very close to you and see if you can see for instance, see this piece of fabric right here? Can you see that fabric in there? It's way under there. It's under layers and layers and layers of the gel medium. And when I did the flowers and things, um, they went right over it like it wasn't even there. So it is dimensional. And as I did this piece, I, I discovered that there were places where I had so much gel on there that as I drew a line for a flower, it actually would cast a shadow down on the paper way under. And it's really wild to draw on a surface and then see a shadow being cast several layers down on the paper with nothing in between, apparently. It looks, it looks like there's nothing there. So I did this piece intentionally. Um, tissue paper collaged in there, fabric collaged in there, and layers and layers and layers, and then layers and layers and layers of the heavy... Um, of the matte super heavy gel and then I drew Posca flowers on top and then I think I think I've got a layer of the glue and water on there too so but that's I hope you can see by looking at this the dimensional aspect of it which is what to me makes it look like encaustic now that's just to me that's my perception I don't know if everyone else feels this way I think it all your your perception of what encaustic stuff looks like depends on what you've seen over the years, what what you're aware of, you know. And um, I haven't seen a whole lot of it, but I've seen enough to make me want to do it. And this comes close enough for me. I'm I'm pretty happy with that. But can you see the dimension and it floating and everything? So there's that. Um, this could wind up being cut and put into. A larger collage of some sort that you know I make these things and if they don't seem like a painting or whatever then I just I'll put them in the thing to cut or use later um, but I love how this paper feels um, because the first thing I put on it was the matte super heavy gel it's not warbly and bubbled and warped it is absolutely smooth and it feels nice it feels kind of leathery and heavy in my hands hi Deb how are you Welcome. So, I really love how that piece of fabric's in there with all the strings. And it's completely smooth. The top is completely, completely smooth. So it's like, hmm, that's really captured in there. I love art where stuff is quote-unquote captured. To me, that's really fun. So, I want to show you the next step. Let's say that you've put your your gel medium and paint and stuff down on your paper and it dried. Now what we've done is 
torn some tissue paper. Some of this tie-dye stuff is so much fun. Just tore it in strips, okay, and put it down. And I've used what I jokingly refer to as my top secret formula, which is glue and water. <laughs> oh, and I owe you guys an apology. Oh, hi, Mindy. How are you, Min? It's nice to see you. Um, Last week, I said, oh, I'm going to show you how we make the glue and water mixture. And I opened up a bottle of glue and turned it upside down in a jar and then set it aside and promptly forgot all about it. So, and I don't have my little jar in here, but basically all, all I would do to make the stuff is after the bottle is, after the bottle empties in here, take it out. You can put some water in here and swish it around if you want, but about two tablespoons. Add about two tablespoons to that, maybe three. And then don't shake it because if your jar, if you have a metal lid and it gets wet, it's going to rust. And this gets all rusty and it's bad enough as it is. So I just do this or take a paintbrush handle or something, plastic spoon and stir it. But this is what we use and it's only slightly thicker than, it's kind of like pancake syrup. Get it to that consistency. But it is mostly glue. Okay. So then what you do is you take your your nice fat brush here and you put some of this glue down like this and then lay your paper down and then put some glue back on top and get it all smoothed down and then let it dry and that's that's where I am here this is what I have um, a little tip if you for instance use the glue and water to put this down and say your your brush is now orange because see how it bleeds this is a bleeding tissue paper you've got orange. If you dig into your jar and then drag it here, whoops, drag it across here, orange glue is going to run down into the jar and make all of your glue orange. So here's a tip. Dip in and dip out. Don't put your brush in and smash it or drag it. Just dip in and dip out and then continue. Or you can pour a certain amount of this into a small container and then just paint from that. Maybe a tablespoon and if it turns orange, you could do this. You could drag your brush right here if you wanted to, to control the amount. And then if this all turns orange, it doesn't matter because, you know, you can set it down over here. But this will still be clean. Okay, so there's a, a glue and water tip. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so I put the, the stuff down to make this um, look beige and give it some depth you know it's got some of the matte super heavy gel and then i used the glue and water to collage the tissue paper now i want you to know this is a tip that you need to know let me find the other one there's so much going on here i've got all these pieces laying around and they're some are wet and some are dry and um and i can't find the one that I want to talk to you about. Good grief. Here it is. It was on the bottom. Okay. So this one. Do you see how these pieces of tissue paper... Because this that's what this is. See these stripes that run this way? That was like the first thing I put on after the paint. And um, not this exact color, but you see how they are. Well, do you see how the edges are not... Um, detailed they're sort of blurry they're very soft and there's no hard line on the edges any of them that's because when I use the glue and water I put a real heavy coat on it and the more glue and water you put on it the more your edges will disappear now compare that to this see I didn't put just a whole lot on this so the paper kept its original edges it didn't you know fade away um, you get that soft ethereal look when you use a whole lot of this. It takes it longer to dry. But <clears throat> that being said, now if you see my paper, you can see where the glue and water is and where it's not. It's a little bit glossy where it's not. Let me see where the light's hitting this. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. It's hard to tell. Well, basically, 
where you see this color smearing more, that's where my, that's where my uh, glue and water is and my other stuff is here. Now I will say this about the glue and water. If you go to paint around this at this point, if it's painting you want to do with acrylic paints, this glue and water will sort of um, come up off the gel medium if you get it too wet or play with it too much. Now, if you dip in your brush and paint and just paint, it's fine. But if you paint, 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 it's going to start to come up. Okay, so you got to be pretty sure about what you're doing and you got to get in there and, and paint. Now, here's the piece. It was this piece of tissue paper and this piece of tissue paper. And I got in there and painted on top of the glue and water just to see, you know, just to see what it would, uh, how it would respond. And that's, this is one of the ones that I found out that the glue and water doesn't like too much paint. If you paint and let it dry and then come back, you can do more, but you just can't do a whole lot right on top of that glue. If you br keep brushing, it just comes right up. Um, over time, it will settle down. It's, I don't think that's anything you have to worry about long term. Here's another one, and and um, I think it was Carol was asking about pencil marks. This is one. Okay, can you see this scraffito? This little where I took a uh, um, emboss or embossing tool. This guy, and it was still wet. I had put paint on top of glue and water, and it was still wet. And I took my embossing tool and sort of did a scraffito. I dug it up and made it um, really textured and made a little design and it took it back down to the original beige. Um, I made some pencil marks here and this is with the black Prismacolor Premier Pencil. I did some white circles around these gold circles with my white pencil. And I did these, I drew these black swirls with the pencil and, and these, this is black pencil, this is white. And this is white, this zigzag. I just drew and blended and colored. So I've, I just wanted to get this. This this does not really speak to me artistically. This is not like a goal or anything. This was like a sample for you guys to see the textures, what things do. And again, if I don't like this as a painting painting, I may later um, use it to cut it, tear it, whatever, in a big painting. So what I will do at this point is lay this down and I think I just want to get some of this on here because I want to see I want to get this filled in and I think I'm going to have to use a brush to do it because I want to paint in all these little holes and fill it with this gel medium so Kelly's Color Laboratory experimenting I like the circles but these are the other one I can't tell which one you're talking about Thank you, though. I'm glad you like. Um, okay, so I'm going to kind of just take a brush, and I'm going to paint on top of this. I may not go off the edges. I'm not worried about the edges. I'm just going to get the, the middle done, and I just want to get that palette knife clean. I just want to get some, some of those holes filled up. And I think that'll make it look very textural. I think it'll be nice. And I want to use, I love this guy, these kind of brushes. Um, this is a Langnickel 1 inch, 2.5 centimeter L283. Um, Lowe sells these as chip brushes. But this is, this one has been through the ringer and it's really held up well. I like it. Anyway, that being said. Sometimes people want to know what you're using, so I'll take a minute. And... So, see, I'm going to put this here, and I'm going to just work 